In this video, we're looking at uniforms. We'll look at what they are. We'll start to make some sense of uniform locations. This is applicable to attributes as well. We'll write some basic code that uses uniforms for simple values. And we'll look at some slightly more advanced usage, where we use uniforms to send arrays of values into our shaders. This last one is such an important part of WebGL, but it's often overlooked, especially in beginner tutorials. OK, so uniforms simply are global variables that we can define in our shaders and set in our JavaScript. Vertex shaders and fragment shaders can have their own uniforms and can share the same uniforms. During a draw call, this value remains constant for your shaders. If you want to change a uniform value, for example, if half of your objects are green and the rest are red and that color is set in a single uniform, you can only do it in a separate draw call. That's not a bad thing, but if you have dozens or hundreds of objects, each with a unique color, uniforms are not a great choice. You'll definitely want to use attributes, since they can do this in a single draw call. Next, we need to talk about locations. Uniform locations and attribute locations are both values that help connect your JavaScript, which executes on your CPU, to your compiled WebGL program, which executes on your GPU. In JavaScript, we tend to think of looking up an object property by its string name as being easy and mostly inexpensive. But in a compiled language, Property names are mainly a convenience for programmers. And during compilation, they're almost always replaced by pointers or offsets or, in other words, by numbers. And what these numbers are in a program after it's been compiled is usually not guaranteed. So if names are out and numbers are unpredictable, what do you do? Well, you ask the program. You ask, hey, GPU, where did you put u underscore foo in this program? And the answer back is something like, it's the third uniform. That's what get uniform location and get attrib location is all about. Okay, so, so hang on a second. Why does get attrib location return a number, but get uniform location return an object? a WebGL uniform location object, an object that has no properties and no constructor. I'm sure there's a reason, but honestly, I don't know. But in the version of OpenGL that WebGL is based on, GL get uniform location definitely returns an integer. So that location object seems to be an opaque wrapper for that number. Anyway, it's best to see it as a number and not to think about it too much. So. Since the WebGL program won't change once it's been compiled, this value won't change either. So you only need to ask for it once per WebGL program after you've compiled and linked its shaders. You definitely don't want to ask for a location for every animation frame or for every draw call. You're going to get back the same value again and again. Let's see what this looks like in a fragment shader, for example. First, we declare a uniform of the appropriate type and give it a name. Then we use that variable wherever we need it. And then, in our JavaScript, we ask the GPU for the location of this uniform and keep track of this value for when we need to use it again. Then, we call the appropriate setter using our location and the value or values that we want to be used. And honestly, that's it. It's one of the simplest parts of WebGL. Let's see this in action. We're going to go back to our Hello World program that we made in an earlier video. What I think we'll do here is change the vertex shader. Let's set the point size and the position using uniforms. So we'll need one uniform for the point size and another for the position. In fact, why don't we make the position uniform a vec2, just pass in an x and a y. GL position still needs a vec4, so we'll need to add the remaining information statically. Now the JavaScript. Let's get the uniform locations for both.
and pass in some values. And that works. Let's try a couple draw calls now. Perfect. One thing to note is that the data type that you choose in your shader determines which function you use to set the uniform's values in your JavaScript. For example, if your shader expects a uniform to be a vec4, you need to use uniform 4f. If it expects an int, you need to use uniform 1i. This summary shows some shader data types and their corresponding WebGL setters. It's pretty intuitive. But wait, I hear you shouting, what about the v? Almost every function for setting a uniform has two versions. For example, there's both a uniform 4f and a uniform 4fv. What's with that? Great question. If you choose the v methods, instead of passing in one or two or three or four value arguments, you pass in an array of values instead. So, these first two statements have the same effect. It's almost as if these are functionally identical and interchangeable. And in this case, it's true. But, if the non-v variants are for setting a single vector, the v variants are actually for setting arrays of vectors. In the third statement here, we're effectively defining an array of three vec4s. The first vec4 is 1234, the last vec4 is 9, 10, 11, 12. And this is incredibly powerful. Consider this JavaScript. In the last line here, we're picking a color from a list of RGBA colors. Since index equals zero, we're selecting the first color from the list, which here appears to be red. And we can do the same thing in our WebGL programs. First, we need to define some uniforms, one for the color index and the other for an array of three VEC4s. If you're unfamiliar with C-style arrays, the square bracket notation here is how you define and initialize a fixed array of a certain data type. So we're defining U colors, as containing three VEC4s. We can then select one of these colors with our index and assign it to frag color. And then in our JavaScript, we set the uniform values like before, except this time we pass in an array of 12 numbers to the colors uniform. Let's try this out in our application. First, let's clean up a little bit. Instead of our static vec4, let's pick a value from a list of colors. Our index uniform is an int. And our RGBA colors will be vec4s. And there will be three of them. And that's all we need. Just remember what you called them. In our JavaScript, let's look up our uniform locations. The index is an integer, so we'll need to use uniform 1i to set it. And let's choose the first value from the list. That's 0. And for our colors, we need to use uniform 4fv. We have to pass in enough numbers to create three vec4s, so that's 12 numbers in total. Fewer will cause an error, and more will simply get truncated. we got our red point back. 
but is it working? Yes, it is. So that's the Uniforms Crash Course that I really wish I got when I first started learning WebGL. I really hope this helps.